Okay, I know that these are technically not real years, but I have to talk about it because the Sooners Under the Stars is going on, and there's a lot of prospects from class of 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of future stars in town, and so my boy PG from the PG Show is pulled up. We're going to talk about some of the players in and who he's excited about. We'll talk about that. Let's talk about that. But first, welcome to Unfair Sports. If you are new to the channel, I am your host, Jay. If you like what you're seeing, hit the like button. And then if you're new, subscribe. We would love to have you part of this great college football community where we're talking a lot of OU football and college football in general. And you don't want to miss any of the content coming down the line. And so we're going to dive into the Sooners Under the Stars, some of the players that have confirmed their visits, posted pictures all over social media. And uh, yeah, let's see who's the most exciting in the commitments we think may come down the line so let's dive right into it so we've got to talk about the Sooners under the stars PG we that's been going on what the 25th and 26th so we've got a whole bunch of uh, students from the 25 class 26 27 28 29 30 30 whatever they're all here to uh soak in the um Oklahoma Sooner hospitality and decide if they want to come here and so pg i specifically brought you here on this because you've been really keeping up on the 25s and 26 uh players a lot better than me and so looking at the ones that you know are in town based upon of course we've seen all the social media posts they're posting pictures and videos of them in gear instagram as well as on twitter who's jumping out to you the most who's one of the players that everybody needs who give us your first player you think that everybody should definitely get to know as far as names go. Michael Fasusi. Ooh, and you did an interview with him. I have done an interview with him, and I know he'll be narrowing down his schools here pretty quickly. Uh, And I know specifically that he met with our currently committed four-star quarterback in the 2025 class, Kevin Sperry, and that family. Um, And the fact that he's already wanting to narrow down his list uh, which I know some people will say, hey, the top list, like that just means it's going to extend. No, uh, the fact that he's narrowing it down in the 2024 cycle in July tells me that this recruitment's about to wrap up probably by December. And okay, that's uh, fair. five star offensive lineman, and we've told you guys, offensive line is the year for Oklahoma. Got all those guys at Bishop Gorman. Got the guys in Texas. I mean, Lamont Rogers, Ty Haywood, Michael Fasusi, and then I can't even say the guys in Bishop Gorman, but uh, there's like three or four of them out there. So Oklahoma's literally going to have the pick of the litter when it comes to offensive line. So Michael Fasusi, that's the one you got to watch out for. But Oklahoma has had a slew of guys pretty much confirm that they're going to be here this weekend. And I'm really focusing on 2025 because – I get that there's 2026 20, dudes here, but it's 2026. 20, like, that's a whole two cycles away. But it's not a real year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you've got all these five stars on campus. You got, which, by the way, I think before we start really just diving into the list, Oklahoma is, and this can be a video for a later date, they're pulling in guys from modern day. And it's not just one, it's not two, not three, but right now, at least four confirmed modern day teammates on campus. This week, four Sooners under the stars. And you might be saying, why is that important? That's Lincoln Riley's backyard. Literally, that is USC's haven for recruiting. And the fact that Oklahoma is getting all of these guys to even come out here, I think that's pretty big. So you've got Jordan Davison, the five-star running back, Jonah Williams, the five-star safety. The important thing to note about Jonah Williams was I didn't believe Oklahoma really had a shot here until they landed Taylor Tatum. And Jonah Williams all of a sudden was like, oh, Oklahoma. And the reason why is Jonah Williams is another two-sport athlete. you got to kind of see the writing on the wall here. You see the themes. The staff's going after two-sport athletes. They're going after the guys that can play multiple positions. They like the versatility that these guys are able to bring. You've got the top 100, four-star offensive tackle, Ty Haywood, Isaiah Mosey, Marcus Harris, who is from Carl Albert High School, if I'm correct. Uh, or no, Marcus Harris is from uh, Modern Day. You yeah. have Grayson Harris out of Texas. You have Riley Wormley, Kevin Sperry, Kamori Moore, Landon Rink, Kobe Sellers, Tristan Hayes. Tristan Hayes is out of Carl Albert. Just took a visit to Bama. Yep. Darius Dixon, Zay Gentry, Malik Hawkins, Abdul Sanders Jr. Marcus James is the guy that I was thinking of from Carl Albert. Gus Cordova, 
I'm sure you guys are recognizing that name. Very important one. You guys might want to keep your eye on. David Nwaboku. You've got Alexander Shield Knight, Chase Lofton, Rohan Kazadi, uh, Rashad Hunt. Oklahoma is definitely stacking the board for 2025. <sighs> and the important thing is, and to understand why kids might want to commit early, the rules are changing for the 2025 class. You can only take 25 commits. Recently, over the past couple of years, due to COVID, they've been able to kind of take up to their scholarship amount of players, whatever they had available. Mm -hmm. Now it's going back down to 25, meaning kind of like what you're seeing happen with Alabama's and the Georgia's. Kids are going to want to lock in their spots early because you can't play around anymore. You can't drag your recruitment down all the way to National Signing Day because there might not be a spot for you. So it's important to kind of keep that in mind that Oklahoma, by the time the 2025 class actually starts, have a solid foundation with probably five or six commits. So we talked about 2024, Oklahoma had seven commits going into June and July. Oklahoma could have that many just to start the cycle. That's Which will be huge for That's Oklahoma. Crazy. It's huge for recruiting, especially when you can have those players doing the additional recruiting for you. Because remember, just like you said, PG, those that are uninitiated, when the transfer portal was originally open, one of the problems that coaches complain about is that sometimes some schools are losing more players than they're bringing in. And so it's hard for them to be able to gauge how many they can bring in, what, what they're going to do about their rosters, et cetera, so on and so forth. And so the last two years, and this is why recruiting has been crazy the last two years, they lifted that 25 maximum deal just for the two years. Now, granted, next year we anticipated going back to 25, but right now, the NCAA is trying to figure out how to balance that with the transfer portal um, and allowing that movement, allowing teams. I, I think the goal is going to be to allow a one-for-one one once the trans once they figure out how they want to do transfer portal. Because remember, they let the transfer portal go with NIL, and they just let it go act like gangbuster. They just let Wild Wild West do whatever you want to do. We don't care because we don't know what the hell we're doing. Well, now they're starting to figure out that there has to be some actual changes and actual logic put in here when it comes to bringing these players, um, bringing these, uh, allowing these rosters to be constructed. So besides that, PG gave you some names. One to remember, Michael Fasusi. I've watched the video of the interview. Nice kid, smart, humble. He's going to be dope to have, and he's a five-star offensive lineman. And PG, you're right. Everyone has been on Coach Bedenbow's neck about recruits. 2023 class, he brought in some really good offensive linemen. He brought in some good transfers to play immediately over the last couple of years. And 2024 has been, it's getting better. We're starting to see some of those players come down the line, which I think we've got two players that we could potentially win over the next four months or the next four weeks. So we're waiting on that, but... 2025 is really when the offensive line recruitment is going to be heavy because that's when we're going to really need to start preparing for spots, especially going into the SEC. And so Fasusi is one big one to keep your name on. Gus Cordova is one you just mentioned recently. I saw a crystal ball go in for him a month or so ago, I believe. I remember hearing his name just a lot. Keep your eyes open. Gus Cordova, Gus Cordova, Gus Cordova, out of Lake Travis, which is same high school that Baker Mayfield went to. And... I was just like, huh? And if I'm correct, Baker talked to him. If I'm correct, I think I saw somewhere that Baker actually had a conversation with him, which is even more fascinating. But he's one name everybody's been talking about. Keep your eyes on for a while. And my, if I'm correct, he's also here for the uh, Sooners under the stars. And I also saw Kevin Sperry tweet out a eyeballs boomer or whatnot because he is, of course, there at the Sooners Under the Stars, hanging out with the recruits, trying to build the class up as the main guy, as the leader of the class. Yeah, I, I think that's a name to keep your eyes open for over the next few days because you're right, PG. There's a good chance we could walk into 2024 with seven 2025 commits, possibly more. It's growing. It's growing. Yeah. Um, give us another name. And it's important to note before we move on from Gus Cordova, I heard on a Twitter space that I believe he had an uncle that was OU Legacy. So mm. it, it, this kid might be an OU Legacy kid, which is why you're seeing it like 
wrap up. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure about that. I felt like I heard that, so I know you guys are good at this. You guys, a lot of you were probably on that Twitter space, so you can jump down in the comments and correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm yeah. like pretty sure that's what it was. But the dude's got four offers just this month from all Power Five schools: Baylor, Oklahoma. Pittsburgh and Houston, right? He is gaining traction on the recruiting trail and you'll see it not only in his huddle film, but in his stats from 2022, where he totaled 59 tackles, three tackles for loss, one sack and one fumble recovery, because I know what's going to happen. Some of you guys are going to jump down in the comments here and go, he's not rated in the composite rankings. Well, one, it's 2025. Sometimes it takes a while for them to get guys uploaded because they're still focusing on these 2024 kids and evaluating that talent. But Gus Cordova in his junior season is definitely going to raise eyebrows and he is definitely going to move up in the composite rankings. By the time it's all said and done, if this kid continues to develop and grow the way he is, this is a guy you could see end up with 20 plus offers by the end of his recruiting cycle and be a top 250 player in the country realistically that's what you're looking at in Gus Cordova locked on Sooners posted a tweet about him back on the July 15th 6 5 250 yep and he was training so you can go on Twitter and go look look at locked on Sooners I'm about to retweet it myself just so I can have it on my timeline because yeah he I mean he's sizey for was that as a going into his junior year it's a pretty big boy and as an edge, you keep him in the weight room, keep him lifting. He has the frame for it. And so he got his offer July 12th, and that's all I've been hearing about is him. Uh, it's been one of those keep your eyes open, keep your eyes open, keep your eyes open. And he's here. He's at Soon as Under the Stars, and he's definitely someone to pay attention to. All right, well, PG. The exciting thing is about getting these commitments like a Gus Cordova and Michael well, okay, potentially Michael Fasusi early, but like a guy like mm -hmm. Kevin Sperry and Grayson Harris is, you guys noticed from, I know pictures that I posted and other pictures people posted is Kevin Sperry was at the Burton Venables camp and so was Grayson Harris. So one thing you've noticed is these guys continually come back and they work out at these camps. They come to these unofficial visits. There's a, you know, a world where you have a really well developed 2025 class. And I think that's something that's under talked about because, yes, they commit early. You got to hold on to them. But if they're committed and they're showing up to all these camps and they're getting things to work on, that's the thing. When I was watching Kevin Sperry, Jeff Lebby was over there literally coaching his dad, giving him things that both Rozzy mm -hmm. and Kevin needed to work on. And that's happening with all these other recruits. When they come, there's things they need to work on. So think about the development that these kids are going to get in high school when they show up to these camps and they get things to work on. They work on those things in games. They're going to continue. Their stock's going to rise in the rankings. And when they get to Oklahoma, they might be a little bit more prepared to start as freshmen or have significant playing time as freshmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. And going into the SEC, you know, I don't know how many freshmen I want to play, but if you're a transcendent talent, I want you on the field, especially because we're going into the SEC. And so they'll be part of year two of the SEC uh, experiment for <laughs> for Oklahoma as we try to see if we can continue uh, dominance and uh, greatness long-term there. But let, let's dive into one other player that I really want to talk about, Isaiah Mosey. Now, we know Isaiah, two of them, actually, Isaiah Mosey and Kamori Moore, two players that I saw our crystal balls going in for us um, that potentially we're going to land. Uh, Isaiah Mosey, four-star wide receiver, and Kamori Moore is a four-star defensive lineman. Both play at a particular high school that everyone is keeping their eyes on. Lee Summit North, right? Uh huh. Yeah, Lee Summit North. Their teammates Lee Summit with North. Williams Winery. There were also teammates with Williams Winery. That was my point. That's what I was getting to. Is now that all the drama is coming down with Winery as his decision is anticipated based upon his coach, Jamar Mosey, which is Isaiah Mosey's dad. The anticipation is the decision is coming August 1st. That's that's where they plan on potentially wrapping things up or that may be when they make their decision, but they won't announce it to later. We don't know. There's never been an official tweet statement or anything from Winiri or his family saying it, but this was his coach giving us his anticipation. PG, bringing them in, and then, of course, Winiri didn't show up and the internet lost its collective mind on it. We'll talk about that in another video. Um... What's your thoughts on those two athletes and the pipeline that Kansas City that Oklahoma's trying to build? 
Yeah, so I'm actually working on getting Kamori Moore on the podcast because I think that's an intriguing prospect. I think we've talked so much about Isaiah Mosey, and I, I'm kind of just sitting here waiting for that one to drop because it feels like that one should come at any time. Um, so, uh, yeah, no surprise there. Kamori Moore is interesting, though, because hmm. it's a defensive lineman that I think is really good. You've seen him in the camps. He's a guy that I think under Todd Bates, yeah, he might not be a year one or year two starter, but by year three or four, he could be a dominant force on the field. And uh, yeah, again, not ranked in the composite rankings right now, but who cares? Now, there are those two guys that are going to be here for Sooner than the Stars, and primarily the two most talked about guys in 2025 from Lee Summit North, but there's another kid from Lee Summit North, a three-star linebacker by the name of Chase Pearsall, who I think also might be a name that everybody needs to watch for again sliding under the radar but Lee Summit North is going to end up becoming a pipeline for the University of Oklahoma it already right is. I mean you look at what they got in Caden Green a offensive tackle that I think by year two will be a starter on that left side and definitely could have some playing time this year depending on you know what happens like god forbid there be any injuries but you know how it works on the offensive line there are injuries so you know I'm Caden Green might have to step in at one point here this season, and he's a guy that can do that for you. So Lee Summit North is providing a lot of talent. The question is, when are those two going to pop off? Because they've been to Oklahoma quite a bit. Does it take a williams Winery to actually commit for a guy like Kamori Moore and Isaiah Mosey to commit? Or are they the stepping stones that get williams Winery to commit to the University of Oklahoma? Yeah, and I know that that's the stress for everybody is that's the third best player in the country, the top defensive lineman in the country, and everybody wants him. And welcome to high-end recruitment in uh, basically the SEC now. This is what everybody's going after is those big defensive linemen. And things are tougher right now because of the not – that you don't have to limit your class. And so – because of that, you're going. The stress is there with him as well as David Stone, and David Stone is appearing to do more visits, which we anticipated that was going to happen. We anticipated him to be more so a early signing day type of commitment guy, because you know I would think he would want to get it done before senior season and not focus on it anymore. But at the same time, maybe he wants to take his visit. So we'll see how it goes. PG, thanks a bunch for pulling up on the channel. Let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, y'all can find me on YouTube, Apple, Google, or Spotify, The PG Show. Uh, you know, during this, we talked about some interviews. If you want to hear those first, jump over to Apple and Spotify. I'm plugging those up there first, and usually about a couple days later to a week, we're going to post them on YouTube. But you guys want to be one of the first people to hear those interviews. There's a lot of good content coming out of those. We are really starting to deep dive into recruitments, why kids are picking specific places, so mm -hmm. that you as a fan can understand what all goes into that process, how a kid makes a decision, so that hopefully y'all can calm down a little bit during the recruiting process when maybe Oklahoma is in you know top 60 and not a top five program in the month of June or July so I would love to have you guys pull up and be a part of that and love for you guys to drop questions if you watch a YouTube video drop an interview question down there what do you want to hear from them so love to hear that from you guys yeah definitely and thank y'all for pulling up here to the channel if you uh, like what you see, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We'd love to have you to join this community. And uh, make sure you go check out all the video, uh, the videos as well as interviews that PG does over there at the PG Show. You can find his information in the description below. And uh, yeah, YouTube says watch one of these videos. I highly recommend it because I curated for you specifically. And uh, we'll talk soon. Peace. <laughs>